It's time! Episode 15, the ATM podcast. And there goes the throat. Martin Devlin from the platform. Mark Watson joining me. We're talking about the All Blacks. Is average being too kind after the Japan lack of performance? Women's rugby, the World Cup, there is only three matches in this tournament. Hey, no, that's okay. It's a bit like the Rugby League World Cup. It all kicks off at a certain stage in the knockout. Black Caps tonight versus England. Do we do what Steve Waugh did in 1999 against Scotland and go slow to knock Aussie out of this? Because if England beat us... That's pretty much Australia gone for the tournament. What happens to RTS? What happens to Brody Retallick? And Australian Netball have a brand new sponsor. We spoke about this last week. Apologise to me! Mark, let us start in Japan. And look, you know, being an all-black fan, I want you to accentuate the positives. I want you to take the positives and the learnings from this well, because the boys are great to be well, around. We've been training hard and now we go over and we play Wales. I just want to firstly try and understand how resting our players during Super Rugby and not having them play a lot of MPC benefited us against Japan. Oh, we came in rusty. Of course you came in rusty, you morons. You haven't bloody well played. But does it really surprise you? I am just amazed at how fickle our media are and how much New Zealand rugby have them in the pocket. So we beat Australia at Eden Park in this Bledisloe Cup match. Good score. But... It's like going into the gym, isn't it? Pushing big weights. The weights ain't pushing back, mate. And that's exactly what the Australian forward pack didn't do. They didn't get flat up in our face. The moment teams play the way Ireland played, the moment teams get up and frustrate us, we are absolutely clueless. I didn't expect us to go close to losing that. I thought we would still beat Japan and Japan comfortably. When are we going to realise that the likes of Hoskins Tutu, the likes of Akira Wani, these fringe players are just simply not up to it? But where is the decision making? Where are the brains? Are we just that over resourced now that none of these players can think for themselves? But look, it also just highlights once again. When are we going to realise Ian Foster is not the guy? We're not We're not plotting upwards. My prediction is we lose to Wales this week, we bounce back narrowly and beat Scotland the week after, and then we lose to England. Or we narrowly get up over Wales this week, we lose to Scotland and we lose to England. We're losing two out of the three. And then what? Oh, summer comes along, we'll forget it. And then next year, hey, we'll get back into Super Rugby. Our All Blacks will be rested again. And then we'll pick a team. And guess what? It'll be the same core group of players because, because we don't know anything. And the improvement's just around the just corner. Around the it's corner. like the it's guy that just goes just... into the casino and says, look, I'm sure I can beat the house. No, you can't. Las Vegas, go and have a look at it. It wasn't built on damn winners, man. We are not <laughs> going to win the Rugby World no, Cup with Ian Foster at the helm hey, listen, no, and no, no, a right, bunch, hey, it, and a it, bunch of it. players who simply aren't good enough, mate, who are just simply not good enough. And, mate, have well, a look you're at the same as the mass media. You continually make excuses for for these players because you continually well, point at the coaching them? stuff. Who okay. picks them? But who else is there? Well, okay, tell me who's going to play. Duplessis Karifi. Okay, well, that's Brilliant one. for Wellington. Who's going to play? Brilliant for Wellington. Out of the All Blacks 15. Amoa. Brilliant. He's in there now. He's yeah, actually in there uh, yeah, now. Yeah, but not originally. Okay, but if you take out uh, Sotutu, you take out Akira Yuani, uh, who out of that All Black squad going to the Northern Hemisphere, because those are our 31 best players, oh, oh, right? The, or the, the All Blacks 15. The All Blacks 15. Oh, them, sorry, the franchise of the All Blacks. The All Blacks 15, like oh, the McDonald's joke, in New Lynn and the McDonald's joke. down we all know in it's South joke. Auckland we and the McDonald's joke, in Cumu. That's what it's all about. Look, I tell you what, mate, I would give you an answer, but I don't watch it anymore, Martin, like the rest of New Zealand, because they've turned me off it, they've punished me, they've buried me. So who are the players that step up? I don't know, last year, or five years ago, I might have been able to tell you, because I actually cared and I actually watched well, it, Mark. Okay. What did your two boys watch on the weekend? Which one did they watch? No, they didn't receive, because they, they are 19 and they're 21, and they go out to gigs. And when I asked them about this, they said, Dad, what, what do you mean, what's on? They don't, I mean, it just, it's gone past them. We've lost that generation already. That is why there were more people at the 660 concert in Wellington than watched the Black Ferns. Say that out loud. Say that out What do you loud. mean? So, sorry, so you saying 660 uh-huh. had a concert on during the Black Ferns? How dare they? So How dare they? they? How dare you? Ha- has the Labour government come in and legislated them? Oh, they will. Have they been banished? It's disgraceful, said the Justice Minister. Again. What's disgraceful, Mate, Justice Minister? May I say this, Justice Minister? What is disgraceful? 
is the domestic violence rates in this country, the fact that we maim, burn, torture and murder one of our own children every couple of weeks. And you and your government and this and the previous governments have done nothing to stop this. It is only getting worse. We have rampant street crime. We've got kids that don't go to school. But it's disgraceful that the rugby union cocked up and their match is on at the same oh, time as the oh Black Blackburns. Stop this. Okay, who do you blame here mostly? Do you know who I blame mostly? I blame the mass media is who I actually blame. The mass sports media who now, their nuts are now owned by this supposed agenda that is in front of them that if they don't woke themselves to death then somehow they are not doing their job oh. news used to be about reporting the sports news now all it is is it's, it's about why don't you watch what we're telling you to watch it's social engineering i mean the infrastructure in the city i mean if you're going to re if you're going to do a go back to the whole flag debate i'll just have an orange cone in the middle of a black background and that would sum up this damn country it may be a pothole maybe a pothole but it is it's just all social engineering we've talked about this Stop telling us what to watch. Stop politicising everything. And I'm with you, the journalist. You know, I, I look at guys like Phil Gifford, and I don't have a lot of time for guys like Phil Gifford because I, I, like I find Phil. them I find them very disingenuous in what they write. So what's his headline? Oh, the Black Ferns was a better watch than the All Blacks. Oh, how predictable. Hey, just go and say all those politically correct things. If it was so damn good, were you up in Whangarei actually watching it live? Were you? Were you? How many games have all of you media people been to? How many of you feminist-driven journalists have actually gone and watched any of the stuff? All of you, you know, all of you feminists, have you gone out there and watched it? Have you actually gone and taken the time? I just get sick and tired of the predictable nonsense. Continue to shove it down our throat. Of course the Black Ferns look good. There's only three teams yeah, that are any damn teams. good. I mean, that's I, the, yeah, that's I, the I truth. mean, look. That's the truth. I mean, the, that is, the, the, that, Kiwi, that was... the Kiwis, the Kiwis go and look good against Ireland and Jamaica, don't they, when they're playing rugby league. See, oh, look, and we always knew this, though, when it came to the Women's World Cup, and, and, and this is why you've got to absolute short, sort through the the, the the chuff that is presented, you know, four or five stories every day on all the mass sports media websites, just ramming the World Cup down and throw. Here we go this weekend. We finally got to where we have been waiting for, which is the semi-finals, because there's only three teams in the Women's World Cup, us, England, and France. We all knew that before the tournament started, okay? So forget all the rubbish that has been continually spouted about it. We now play France, and the winner plays the Poms. It is worth watching this weekend, because you will now get to see whether or not that Blackfern side have, in fact, improved well, mate, since last I'm year. I'm going to say this. I hope they lose. Oh, stop I it, just mate. can't be you bothered. Cannot, I please. can't be bothered with the political... St I don't want to just... They win, well, and then the 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 just that, give mate. them the Halberg Award because oh, nothing on, mate, will ever reach for these God's heights. Sake, mate, I mean, it's not the players that are behind oh, it. It's not the players that are I'm orchestrating this. But, you know, yeah, at least at least cut them some slack. Like, They're trying to the, win it for I us. I hope the All Blacks lose two out of three oh, tests so, sake, we can hit, so we can hit rock bottom and we can make some damn change in this New Zealand rugby it's union not, can change. stand up and go, hey, hey, and as I've said every week, we've killed every other form of the game. Now the All Blacks are dead as well. What have we got left? Boy, we're good. We put all our eggs in one basket and we're done. And, you know, let's just get rid of the politicisation of rugby. I'm just so over it. I'm just so frustrated and I've constantly maybe been feared guilty for being a bloody man in this society, Well, you mate. should be guilty, mate. Everything's our fault, Martin. It is. Chop it off, mate. Become a woman like everyone else is. Unbelievable. Why won't you? Unbelievable. Why won't you? What? Why don't you? Why don't you do the right thing, mate? I like my masculinity. Do you? I do. How dare you? I know. What's that about? I know. What? I know. What does I, your I, wife I... think? She wants a transsexual next to her in bed. Let us move on. <laughs> we have really, really gone down to we another have, level. I don't, I, don't we, know, I don't know how to get back out of this rabbit hole except to change You need one of those little completely. flashes. Apologise to me. Apologise to me. The Black Caps are playing tonight against England. Now, I've got all kinds of conspiracy theories going on in my head here. If we win, we're through to the semi-finals. This England side isn't bad. Because they got rained out against Australia and split those points, Aussie and England are still fighting for what I think is the other semi-final spot from our group, right? Now, if it gets to a stage in the match, Mark, and I'm just hy hy hypothesising here, if it gets to a stage in the match where all of a sudden England are on top and we think, hang on a second, if they continue like this, their run rate and everything else goes above Australia, do we do the go slow like Steve Waugh did against Scotland in 99 at the one-day World Cup, replicated by Stephen Fleming a couple of years later in that VB series in Australia, where we just put on a go slow and said, hang on, what we want to orchestrate here is we want you out and we want to play them. Screw the Aussies if you can, mate. 
I totally agree Screw with you. Screw the Aussies I, and if I you can. It's gamesmanship. It's actually, it's it's actually gamesmanship professional enough to and, do this. And it's part of the game. The Australians Get Australia have done out of the tournament. And, and if the Australians were to turn around and go, that is just the worst form of sportsmanship. I'm it's sorry, like, Australia. So, sorry, Australia. I'm sorry. The, the, the country that wrote the book. Yeah. The country, it's interesting just on that. See, I'm, I'm so glad that you feel like that. And I hope that all cricket fans in this country do. Forget this. Look. Cricket is a contrived sport like everything else is. It is about manufacturing results to get you the result. Our result is to get into the semi-finals, to give ourselves a chance to get to the final. If we manage to do that and we face Australia in the final, we shite the bed like we always yep. do. Get Australia out of this tournament as far as I'm concerned. Oh, look, I'm I, not saying drop this game against no, England, but I'm saying if it gets no, to a stage you, where we have to manufacture it, what the hell? First and foremost, absolutely. If we say put England and we get them out for, say England out for you know, 140 and we're comfortable, then just slow it right down, as you say. Do whatever. Manipulate the numbers. I'm not sure how you manipulate the numbers, but absolutely, you, you want to get rid of your greatest danger. If you go through the history of winning World Cups, the defending champions Australia, you look at their record at one-day World Cups, you look at their place in Test Cricket, they're playing at home, they've no, got depth for Africa. Teach, really remember. You know, put them out, put them out. Hey, they've never done us any favours, have they? They've never done us any favours. They but, would be thinking just, exactly hey, the same thing. Can I just go off on a tangent? There was an interesting article. The, the swimmer, Ariana Titmus, the Australian 400 metre swimmer, went to the short course world championships. A young Chinese girl broke her world record that stood for four years, right? Swam 3.51, but by two seconds. So what is Channel 7? What are all the articles? Automatically implying that she they, must be a drug yeah, cheat. Nothing to do with the fact that American athletes are constantly winning gold medals at the ages of 15, 16, um, and of course they just do that through hard work. The moment it's a, Chi the moment, the 15, the moment it's a Chinese athlete, they, oh, yeah. this no, is no, the Australians. This mate. is the Absolutely Australians yep. pointing the finger at the Chinese, assuming it must be drug cheats because that's the perception of the Chinese. Yet, hey, We'll just hide behind what America's done and their history in it. And, of course, the Australians are squeaky, squeaky clean themselves. Clean, squeaky mate. clean. All right. Let us move now to a couple of quick rugby topics so, before sorry, we, talk mate, about New Zealand, about, we talk about Australian level. I'm just going back to the whole transgender thing. Sorry, me. Anyway. Apologise to me! Retallic goes before the judiciary tonight. If you look at Bundy Aki, similar kind of thing, although Aki's was a heck of a lot worse. There's a lot more violent confrontation. He got eight weeks. What's Retallic going to get tonight? Is he out of the tour? He shouldn't get anything for that. See, I agree with you. Now, I tweeted was no at the time that I didn't think there was it was no a red card. There was no that at all. Well, I, okay, technically it's a red card. Yeah, but Technically it's a red card. I would say one or two weeks at the most. But the, the law's most. an ass, mate. Well, of course it's an ass, mate. But, the, but I mean, but that's what we're dealing with. And and that is what... He just came in to clean out a ruck. He went in a yeah, bit but low. but the guy's got... head and neck was over like that. He was actually... It was reckless is what it was. It's reckless, but it's not the end of your tour. Well, Mind you, at least he can then say he wasn't responsible. He wasn't part of the team that lost the first test to Wales since 1953 and the first time in the history to Scotland. He can always, at least, mate, he might want to just say, This hey, is look, called glass bam half me, full. Bam me. No, this it's is not. called the ATM. No, it's, it's called not. glass this half called full. Ian, this is called Ian Foster. This is called the All Blacks. This is why this the is glass is This is what you've got next year, mate. Nothing's going to change next year. You know that. Okay. Under Ian Foster, first ever losses to... Um, to, to Argentina, Ireland. to Argentina at home, to Ireland, Ireland. at home, a series to Ireland. Almost we Japan. All know of course, it's going to be Scotland, mate. RTS. What happens to him now? Is he the unfortunate experiment? I thought he did a few good things against Japan. I didn't think he played badly, but he's obviously not up to the All Black Test match tier one standard. No, is well, it? I think he's also playing out of position. I think if he's going to play anywhere, you'd put him on the wing. Because I think he's very good in tight spaces with that side step, but we've got so many good wingers that he'd still be in the picking year. Yeah, but Look, his, his, body, his body type, his shape, his rugby league background, for where he's at in his career, there's just actually no position for him on a rugby field. We don't that have the ability to him put best. him in space either to no, give him the ball with no, space look, in front it, of him. It was a marketing ploy that has come up short. Good luck. Roger Tui Vasashek and the All Blacks going forward. Not on my team, mate. Not on my team. Super nice guy, big brand name. Go back to rugby league. Go and do what you do best. But I'm sorry, I hear too many reasons why other players end up missing out on teams. And you go, well, hang on a minute. Why don't you apply that same theory to Roger Tui Vasashek? Because well, it's they're paying him so much money. Because they're paying him so much no money and he's brand guy, RTS. Yeah. Okay. Apologise to me! All right, finally then, Australian netball. We spoke about this last week. Was it cutting the nose off despite the face? What's happened now is Tourism Victoria have got involved with Visit Victoria. Uh, and a couple of things to this. That means that Australian netball are bailed out. Um, after Gina Reinhardt withdrew her $15 million sponsorship. But it does raise a question for me. I mean, obviously you've got some thoughts about this as well. But it, it continually raises the question for me is that you are looking at some, you know, of the 
best tourism opportunities that New Zealand has is when our sports teams go overseas. You've got the Kiwis playing a World Cup, the Black Ferns playing a World Cup, you've got the All Blacks playing a World Cup, you've got the Black Caps out there playing a World Cup at the moment, right? Why do we not have any national tourism on the front of our shirts? It, after COVID, tourism's our biggest international money earner. Why isn't 100% pure New Zealand? Why well, have we got a French company with a lip of a thing on the field you, or whatever? Hey, by the way, if you noticed how much bigger that slowly got, you know, oh, here we, we go. There's a conspiracy you, theory. No, but you remember when there was all sorts of debate on whether the All Black jersey should be bastardised by any corporate sponsorship after all it's called the All Blacks, and that was part of the brand. So when AIA came on, it was quite small yeah, and quite small, deliberate, yeah. wasn't yeah. given a box around it. Now, suddenly people have accepted that apathy's crept in. Now you notice how that Altred brand is much, much bigger on the jersey. And this is the sort of stuff that just sneaks through. And that's and my point, and this is too, we're starting to accept all black losses, just like we're now starting to accept oh, more and more logos oh, yeah. on the all oh, black oh, yeah, jersey. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're building towards look, the look, world I've, I always said that with the Tour de France particularly, get a trade team, put 100% pure New Zealand on it. Uh, the Tour de France is the best advertisement for France, best, I think, marketing from a look, country saw, anywhere in the saw, world. Mark, you saw the GC500 on the weekend was a postcard advertisement for Australian but, tourism. There you go. It is just, it's in front of you. You don't have to ram it down people's throat. As you say, let them look at it and go, wow, what a beautiful place. I'd like to go there. Is this convenient from uh, Visit Victoria? Was this the Australian government actually stepping in and going, uh oh, this is also messy and icky here. We need to bury this quickly. We need to actually get them another sponsor. Because the longer that it lingered, now the story is over, you see, isn't it? So, yeah, so look, actually, I, I, I think there's a lot of merit in what you're saying. I mean, if you really do, really need to market Victoria. I mean, you have the Australian Tennis Open on, which they take around the world. You've got MCG, you've got the cricket that goes around the world into a lot of countries. I mean, I think Melbourne and sort of Victoria you probably sells can look after itself. itself. Yeah, you probably after right. itself. And then reading some of the comments from Australians living in the area, same issue: wealth, roading issues, health issues, nursing issues, all sorts of issues. Saying, "Hey, hang on a minute, this is just taxpayer dollars." Oh, I just want to know, though, and I was just reading up about Victoria back between eighteen forty. In 1860, a lot of atrocities towards the Aboriginals. 2,000 wiped out in one confrontation on a beach oh. down there. How far back do these players go in terms of saying that doesn't fit with our particular values? And that is my whole point. Now, I'm being a little bit sort of tongue-in-cheek here. I'm being a little bit um, cheeky here. But this is the whole point I made. Um, did they consult the players on this one? Did they go to the players and say, are you guys happy with the state of Victoria? Because, look, um, you know, if we dig deep enough, there's a whole lot of things. Yeah. I mean, do you want to accept their $15 million when there's still a nursing shortage, when teachers aren't getting paid that well, when there's a lot of infrastructure? All valid at questions, the moment? mate. They're all valid I mean, questions. Do you sit them all down and go, you know, and then they suddenly go, oh, yeah, well, what's the alternative? Well, you just don't get paid. Yeah, Visit Victoria sounds like a great idea. Yeah, visit Victoria. I mean, yeah. But it is a five-year deal versus a three-year deal, so it's still not to the same value. Yeah, so mate, at least they've replaced. All right, but, then. But, 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 again, we just going back to the government, you know, getting in behind things like Rally New Zealand, I would have thought was a really good way oh, of selling New Zealand. That, 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 that's man. one that's a truly global sport. Yeah. You go to Europe and WRC uh -huh. is I huge. Know, know. That's the event. Now, the America's Cup one, you can say, well, is it world famous in New Zealand? Does it have true global appeal? We've already put enough and you can debate that one. But there are certain events here, which I think we could leverage New Zealand very cheaply in terms of what the alternative to get the same coverage is. And yeah, I mean, Barrett Brothers could promote Taranaki. I mean, they grew up in the backyard and played together, didn't they, Martin? Devlin. Unbelievable. Incredible. The Platform.